Okay, good evening, all you folks. Um, uh, this is the last Kamsa Unit 2 that I'm doing for the, for the season, because Kamsa Unit 2, the exam is tomorrow. So i just giving you all the last, some questions, some random questions from Module 3, to see how the thing will work out. And um, you'll answer the questions. Let me just make sure I share this with folks. Good night, good night, good night. So let's see if we can get this show on the road. Alright, so for those of you watching this video in the future, remember my name is Mr. Charles. This is Make It Simple TT. This is my website. And when you go to my website, you will see cool stuff. You see literally every video that I've ever put up on the video section. But very soon I should organize them by topic and all that stuff. Um, if you're looking for computer science classes and you're not too sure where to look, well, I'm your guy. If you like what you see on YouTube, well, you'll like what you see now. Um, yeah, you go to the website, keep information technology, keep computer science, you click the link, and boom. And you will be able to register for classes. That's for the people in the future. For those of you, those of you all in the live right now, well, welcome to the live. Let me get the questions ready to go. And taking it will mean there tomorrow is the exam. If it has a hundred percent repeats, it will be CXC going, I don't know, a hundred per hundred. I don't know, just like everything is a repeat boy. Alright, so tonight we're tackling module three questions. So module three is like operating systems and networking. Usually there's a lot of um theory to remember. So, let me see, start with this one, starting with number one, alright, so a process is said to be blocked when, oh, just now, I do this thing I do all the time, not changing the screen, okay, so I change the screen, I remember to do that, you're welcome, okay. Yeah, so, hi Amy, I saw you there. Alright, process is said to be... Yeah, our process is said to be blocked when the CPU is unavailable. No, has now entered the system, no. Is waiting on input output and cannot use the CPU if it was free. Yes. Process with the higher CPU is going to CPU time, no. So C is the answer because block a blocked process means that it is um it would have been the queue here but the CPU is up there and everything from the queue is you go to the CPU but when you reach the CPU and you need something else you go down to this special place called the block space here where you're waiting for like a keyboard input or you're waiting for a mouse input or something and then when you get that input then you could jump back into the queue. So it'll be able to get time for the CPU, right? So that's basically what happens when you have um, processes being blocked. Um, that was not that hard. Let's see if we could get something nicer. All right, let me try this one. This one is a little, a little sticky, a little sticky, because um, it has some. has some things I have to understand so let's see it says that um sorry let's give me one second I'm gonna sort out this camera 
it not um it not camera in properly right, i think i move a little to the left there all right nice you see right here you still see my nice good right so what i was saying is right a client is interested in um setting up a wireless land for his place of business very high data rates so yeah you yeah, really want to get fastest wi-fi right critical um so which one you should use a or b well a is usually fast b is usually far all right so that's an easy way for you to always remember it a is fast b is far a is fast b is far if you want to get 30 to 40 megabits per second you're looking at a right um yeah they didn't say anything about large distances they just say high data rates as the, as the critical part so therefore a will be the answer if you wanted to go far you would use 802.11b i'll just warn you all even though the syllabus only has a and b sometimes it's put g and g is fast and far because the A uses 5 gigahertz, B uses 2.4 gigahertz, and G uses um, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Well, N uses both, both of them, but I think it's wireless, N uses it. But anyhow, they didn't have Genie syllabus, <coughs> and well, yeah, that's... Um, that's basically that there. So get yourself accustomed. All right, which of the following? Let's get the next one. I'll go live on Instagram after this, so I'm uh, trying to get this stuff done quickly. All right, which of the following phrases best describes paging? All right. Now, paging is, is rough, is rough, because you have to be able to differentiate this with chunks and frames. And where does it actually go? So what paging does is create this little page, and your real memory doesn't be up here. And then the hard drive will be down here. And it will just kind of juggle between the hard drive and the main memory. And the CPU, the CPU won't check the actual memory here. The CPU will check the page file to get to the memory stuff. So the page file is a liar. And the page file will create a whole set of chunks that will be assigned to different frames. So we'll create frames inside here and the the memory will be broken up into pieces and it will just keep cycling them through so the assignment of chunks of a program called frames to main memory called pages so we will take b here but usually students don't know the difference between chunks and frames so i suggest you go and check that little cash course there and see what's the difference between chunks and frames or else you may get it wrong because I got this wrong a few times when I was correcting it with other students like Giovanni who is in the chat right now but since he say B, it's B because the kid is smart alright number 4 is like this like this, like this, like this like this, like this, like this, like this. All right, our webmaster has decided to design our website offline or load various files. Hold on, eh? Something I'm a computer fan going crazy and uh, trying to figure out what. Who's using up all my OBS? Why are you using all that? All, um, CPU resources, boy. You don't have to. You really don't have to. 
All right, all right. You could use all the resources you want. Your name is OBS. Um, right. What was seeing here? All right. So answer this one for number four. Webmaster decided to design his website offline and upload the files and graphics to website very remotely. What? Which of the following is best suited to upload? Uploading is FTP. Call that file transfer protocol. Scene. Good. Good, 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 good. Hold on, I don't remember how to check something. Right, file transfer protocol is the answer. GSM is for phones, UML is like not HTML, HTML is not HTML, HTML is like the protocol is used for websites. No issues there. No issues there at all. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll check in something. I remote server that and as a CFTP there. And I realize the file is not uploading properly. So now I'm very concerned. But don't worry. Don't worry. I'm cool. I'm cool. I can fix it. I'm a professional. Alright, number five. Five, five, five. Alright, which of the following features enable a user to run multiple programs such as web browser, web processor, um, and media player RAM? If the RAM is too small to hold them, what you are really going to be using is virtual memory because virtual memory lies and tells you that. Yeah, All right. Module 3 is usually kind of cakeish. Where, where there's really good in with module 3 is um, in the actual the long paper now. The long paper module three they could they could give some problems but for the most part it's it have it have its fair share of diabetes in it uh-huh uh-huh this people are fighting me at least what's going on here um i let me I'm gonna choose the next thing that um I try to find questions that are challenging now. Um what is it? Six? Six, yeah. Six Alright, the, the diagram here best illustrates, right? So if you're going from digital to analog, back to digital, what you are doing is modulating and demodulating. So your answer will be C, right? Cake. Lots of cake. Yeah, module 3 in Kamsa Unit 2 is usually cake. Alright, here is this controversial question because of the fact that, well, I'm going to tell you why this question is controversial. Because nobody has used FireWire anymore. We no? use like USB-C and stuff. But, yeah, this one a little, a little ticklish. Right, so... Firewire is actually a high-speed serial bus system, right? Actually, it is. Um, it's definitely not software on a computer that prevents it from external attack. No. That's a firewall. Um, 
type of cable and all involves communication between computers. No. No, this is not the not the controversial one. It's actually see that's easy. But there's a firewire question I just have sometimes. That does be a little hard. Okay. Um so that's that. Let's go again. Module two is a real pain pain in um in this comp side. Yeah, module two is the pain, module two is the pain. I wish the following statements is true about a process being scheduled with a non preemptive algorithm. Alright, so non preemptive means that it can't a non preemptive can't just jump bunks in the CPU just so the CPU will be like nah bruh. Nope, nope, nope. You can't do that just so. So non preemptive means that it has to wait so a non preemptive algorithm once it enters that's not what, place at the top of the ready queue if it has a higher priority nothing now nah, non preemptive and until with priority once it enters the running state it is allowed to run to completion or, or until it yields the processor this one is a good candidate because non preemptive is supposed to run to completion we'll hold that for now once it enters the running state, it's given a fixed amount of time, which the other processor get a chance. Nope, that is preemptive because you only have a certain amount of time before you have to get kicked out. Once it enters the running state, it is given a variable amount of time to use the CPU depending on priority. Nope, definitely not that. So we're looking at B as the answer here. Because that's a um, thing. I didn't see all the answer that one though. We'll go on. Like, all the answers on them dry up. Let me see. Um, um, easy, 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 easy. easy. Easy, 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 easy. Ah, this is the one that was that was that was telling all about just now. Right. So according to the syllabus, you're only supposed to because the syllabus was written in 2010. The only thing you're supposed to know is 802.11 A and B. But apparently, this question have A, B, and G. No. Um. Why did they do that? Why did they include G? But still no matter, because once it's greater than 20 megabits per second, it's A and G the answer, so it'll be 1 and 3. So the answer is D. Um, because B, B is go far but not fast. So that's what's happened there. Um next one. Let's see what's going on with you there. Um Alright. The use which of the following outcomes relates to the use of virtual memory. Memory works faster. Nope, memory doesn't really work faster. It's still the same speed as it was. Faster execution speeds. Nope, the memory will still go as fast as it can. All programs are in memory. Definitely not, because all the programs can't fit in memory. Therefore, illusion that the com computer has more memory. See this word illusion here? Yes. Virtual memory is a lie. You are lying to the CPU, saying that you have more than it. Than it so the answer is D. Virtual memory provides the illusion that the computer has more memory. It's a lie. It's all all smoke and mirrors. Alright, there you go again. Eleven. If 
a node fails in a ring network, how many other stations are affected? So we have a ring network. We have a ring network. Pow, 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 pow. Ringing, ring, 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 ring network. So if, if this is the computer that's sending a message and it's trying to send a message like that way, but and it wants to get to this computer here, it reach here, but let me say this computer end up failing, what's going to happen? If a node fails in a ring network, how many other stations are affected? Very interesting. Very interesting. Because if our ring network fails and you can't get the information to go from one side, it'll send it the next winner. But not all ring networks have that redundancy built in. So we kinda kinda be like, okay, well we're thinking about the best case ring network, which is A or B. So some ring networks, like all ring networks now in the modern era, so modern ring ring networks have redundancy that they could go either this way or that way if things do work out. But back when they did this syllabus, more than likely all the stations would fail because um, all the stations would be affected because you won't be able to send information if this guy here now working. Once you reach there, the box stops there, the box stops there. So, based on the fact that the syllabus is old, I will leave it as B and not as A. But, technically speaking, only half the station is supposed to get affected. Yeah. So, we will go with the primitive answer, as Brandon said, because... Very good boy. They're supposed to update this cape syllabus. They have a draft one, but I feel because of COVID and thing they'll just not update it. And we'll still be using the old syllabus for about two more years. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, the items labeled X and Y respectively represent a what boy? In, in the middle here, this is usually a hub or a switch. So what do they have here? They have hub. Why is a node? Hey! Kick. Anything to challenge the young minds? Let me try this one. Let's see. As you can see, module 3 is not exactly any high end of challenging stuff. Then you know. Alright, which of the following statements best describes a distributed network configuration? Distributed networks, that's when you have. Not everything, not all the processing happening in one place. They have like a central place, but then they have like a substation here, a substation here, a substation here, a substation here. Um, a that's a distributed network, yeah, substations. With a centralized network, everything happens in the center here, and they just have nodes on the outside that's kind of come back to the mothership. So just come back. Help me, tell me what I need to get. But if the mothership fails, then well, the distributed ne the centralized network will not work. So a distributed network is when data and processing are shared across many nodes. Ta-da! Please! Give me something that is challenging. 14. One more and we're done there. Um... There was one with the OSI model, I had to find that one. Which of the following things refers to the state when an excessive amount of CPU time is spent on swapping data between RAM and auxiliary storage? So when you're swapping things between RAM and um, hard drive. Yeah, when you're swapping it, you're really doing um, not paging, not partitioning, and fragmenting is really called thrashing. 
memory thrashing is when you lie to the um, to the RAM and say yeah 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 I have it but this time it really on the hard drive and you had to keep swapping between the hard drive and the RAM just because you know things aren't working out too well so thrashing is the answer there and see if I can find the OSI model question here look 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 another networking question that may or may not be special in a network where the running application generates a significant amount of traffic which of the following devices would not be suitable so you generate a significant amount of traffic so you want to find devices that are smart enough to handle it is a switch smart yes is a router smart yes is a bridge smart yes a hub nope a hub is pretty dumb because all a hub does do is be in the center and just shout the hub will be like, hey, I have something, hey, I have something. And they'll be like, who that for me? Who that for me? Nope. Okay, cool. Moving on at life. So our hub doesn't really do any smart um, switching. All our hub does is shout. So when you have a lot of traffic, our hub does cause a lot of collisions because it keeps shouting. Hope you knew that, kids. Yes. Da 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 da. Right. Um. I da trying to find the one with the um. 20 questions you want to see since this last lap. Boy, what are you really trying to do me? Last lap. That's all. I, I just want to find one question that. Uh, ah, look at here. I want to hear all your rationale for this because my rationale. There you go. Which other layers are responsible for addressing, routing, and transmitting data between nodes? Tell me the answer for that. Because I have some qualms about this question. See, you see, you see what has happened. This one, this one is a, is a tough one. This one is a fight up because it have two sets of addressing that has happened on a um on a computer. You have the MAC address and you have your IP address. So which addressing are they talking about? If they're talking about the MAC address, then they're talking about the um they're talking about the network layer. But if they're talking about the IP address, no, if they talk about the MAC address, sorry, they're talking about the um the data link layer. Data link. If they're talking about the IP address, they're talking about the network layer. So which address are they talking about? Routing, we know for sure. Routing is transport. So that's TCP, right? And transmitting. That's still TCP. TCP does handle all that. But which one of them they talking about between data link and network? So if they go and do um 
if they go in and do um, addressing from the from the MAC address layer, then data link had to be inside. But um, it's very possible that the network part now would handle the routing because that is where IP lives. So the, the IP address now will determine where you are on the network and the transport layer will be where the TCP is. So this here, they could say the, they could be thinking that the routing is your IP address because they had to figure out where to route your based on IP address. So that's why it's a toss up between B and D because you don't know which address they're talking about. If they said responsible for logical addressing or physical addressing, then we would know whether it's to say Mac or IP and we would know if to include data link. But it didn't say between physical or logical. So we had to assume that they're talking about logical addressing because they're talking about IP, they're talking about addressing, routing, and transmitting. So it's clear that it's higher up the OSI model, right? So it's, it's higher up the OSI model. So yeah, please do not touch Steve's pet alligator. So they're kind of living on the OSI model from, um, from here. But it's very possible that the process could have been starting from data link going up to transport. Data link network and transport. Because that's where the MAC address is. This will be the MAC. This will be the um, IP. And then this will be the, um, the transmit. So if you think from data link go up, then you use D. But if you think from network go up, you use B. But the only way you'll know to go from network go up is if you know if it's a logical address or if it's a physical address. So, my personal view, based on what these people always want or how they think, I think they wanted you to put D because they want you to understand that um, the whole process is longer. And it starts from data link, it goes to network and it goes to transport. But if they meant logical address like IP address, which is very possible that they might think, then it would just be B because it would just be network and transport because network and transport does handle addressing, routing and transmitting all the time, which is the TCP IP, um, TCP IP protocol. So the question most likely trying to ask you about the TCP IP protocol or trying to cut custom knowledge of the OSI model. Which one? Brendan say three keywords, three answers. Somehow I think I think you're correct, you know. I think you're correct. That kinda well, we give you three keywords, we can give you three answers. And this is what this these are the kinds of stuff that's bottom eh, with um with the exams. It's it needs to have some sort of clarity, boy. You really don't know which one to choose. So, um, yeah, so if you go in the exam and you see this question, as I'm on telling you, choose D, right? Because <laughs> I feel, I feel that they're really trying to test here on the OSI model more than t more than the understanding of TCP IP. But trust me when I tell you, it could be either one of the two. And I just explained to you why. Everybody understand why, right? Um Yeah I think that's the day now. I don't have anything else that um I don't have any other question I, I consider to be challenging inside module 3. Um, nope, can't find any. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that will be a day for this, um, this one because module 2 is really where the killer, where the killer questions have come from. Where you don't know where, <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. Module 3 is usually straightforward because it's much more technical in terms of theory and understanding.
So this should be good for that exam tomorrow based on the current track record. You'll get plenty of repeats, but the problem when it comes to our unit two is that even though it have repeats, you really don't know the answer to some of the questions because of the way it phrased. So go with God. Choose um choose the one that that you think is best. But there's some of them definitely that it had to answer. So you just had to kinda of figure out what you really want to choose and you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it. Alright, so thanks a lot. Remember you could the crash courses and it must be up till tonight. So if you're not too sure about some of the theory, you could go and read it just to make sure. And if I explain something in a video and it, it may not making sense, just watch your crash course and see if you could understand. Make some sense of it. But other than that, I go on there. You know, I will see you all on Instagram for tech talk because I need to go on I need to talk about um I need to take up, talk about our uh, that one one plus node. And I also need to talk about the school that decided that they want to put a laptop on the book list. That would be so interesting. So, you're welcome everybody. Enjoy your exam tomorrow. All you remember to come back and check my on the Instagram stories to tell me how it was, right? So, um, don't leave me hanging when I put the stories up and I ask for your, for, your, for your candid comments. And of course, if I helped you and you feel happy about my help and all the teaching and stuff that I do, you can leave a review on my, my website just in case you know people need to know that. Uh, that you like or teach or something like that. Okay, goodbye.